Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video in the FINA 5000 DCF tutorial series. Today we're going to be working on projecting out networking capital so that we can calculate the change in networking capital, which is the last line that we need to fill in our free cash flow calculations. So to do this, we are going to project out four different balance sheet items based off of their historical percentages as a percentage of sales. So basically, the goal is to fill out the networking capital tab of the DCF template. So to do this, first we're going to start with linking in these revenues. Uh, all the previous revenues that had happened in the past are ones that we're going to get from the income statement. So we're going to basically just set those equal to the previous sales values over the last five years. And we can copy and paste the formula so that it doesn't mess up any of the formatting for all those previous numbers. Then for future revenues, we already projected those out on the free cash flow statement. So we can actually go straight to that and make sure you do the one that's one year ahead and not the current one. And then we can copy and paste those as well. So that we have all of the past and future revenues already in this sheet. Next, our goal is to link in the different accounts receivable from the past five years. So we basically just do equals and then go over to the balance sheet and we'll scroll up here and find accounts receivable, which is right here. And then we will again copy and paste over those formulas. So now that we have those over, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually calculate the accounts receivable as a percentage of revenues. So to do that, um, we will actually just reference the accounts receivable normally, but we will reference the sales. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit F4 twice, which what that does is it makes it so that it is an absolute row reference, but not an absolute column reference. And the reason for doing that is that when we eventually copy these formulas down, it won't change the row number so that it's always referencing revenue but it will allow us to copy sideways so that we can still have it reference the different levels of the sales over the past five years. So what this looks like is when we copy this and we paste over the formulas, then it'll actually make all of these different, but it will never stop referencing revenue, even if we copy this and paste it down here for these other things that we're gonna project in just a second. So now that we've calculated accounts receivable as a percentage of revenues over the last five years, Basically, we're going to project accounts receivable by using the average of those accounts receivable over sales ratios over the past five years. So what we'll do is we'll do equals average, and then we will select these five numbers. And now, before we end up hitting enter in this, you're going to want to hit F4 three times. And what that does is the opposite of what we did here. It makes it an absolute column reference, but not an absolute row reference. And the reason for doing that is when we drag this over, it makes it so that this whole blue box doesn't shift to the side one each time. But when we take this formula and we copy it down to the lines below, it'll reference this row instead of referencing this row still. So that'll just make it a lot easier when we copy paste these formulas in a second so that we don't have to do as much work when we do these calculations again to project the other balance sheet items. So now that we've calculated the average accounts receivable over sales ratio over the last five years, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this ratio is going to be the same for the next five years, which means that we can assume that accounts receivable is this number times the sales in every single year going forward. So when we reference the sales number in this, we're going to end up doing F4 twice, which again makes it an absolute row reference, but not an absolute column reference, which is the same thing that we did down here. That way it always references revenues even when we copy this down, but we have the ability to paste it across here and reference the different revenues in each different year. So then we just hit enter, copy it, and paste formulas. And then as you can see, accounts receivable basically grows in conjunction with sales over the course of the future periods. So now this is the part where having all those absolute references comes in handy. So instead of having to redo these three sections, we can actually just copy what we just did and then paste formulas. And we'll do the same thing for all three of these items that we're going to project inventory, accounts, payable, and other payables. And then now that we've done that, we basically have all of these formulas working properly, but the only thing that we need to redo is the actual references to the other sheets for the inventory accounts payable and other payables. So real quick, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and link in the inventory numbers straight off of the balance sheet. There's the inventory. And we'll copy that over. That way it goes for the next couple of years. And we'll do the same thing with accounts payable. And then we'll again copy that over. 
Then finally, we're going to go and reference the other payables, which are over here. So it may be called something different, such as other current liabilities. Uh, you basically just needed to kind of take a look at it. Uh, so basically, think about what other payables are important for networking capital. So working capital is stuff that goes into the actual production of whatever your product is or making your business run. So that would not include things like income tax, because income tax isn't something that makes your business run, whereas things like accrued payroll and miscellaneous current liabilities are things that make your business run. So those are included in other payables. So we'll do other current liabilities, which the way FactSet does it, if it's further to the left than the things below it, then that means that these are included and summed up into this number. So we can just reference this number directly without having to add these two into it. So then what we'll do is we'll copy and paste this over into the other years. And then now we have finished projecting out all four of the balance sheet items that we needed. So now that we have all these items forecasted, what we can do is go ahead and calculate our current assets by simply adding up the inventory and accounts receivable. Then we're gonna copy and paste this over for all of the years. And we're gonna do the same thing to calculate the current liabilities. Simply add up accounts payable and other payables. And then we'll copy and paste that over for all of the years. The next, we're gonna calculate the networking capital in each year, which is simply the current assets minus the current liabilities. Again, copy and paste this through for all of the years. And then finally, we will calculate the change in networking capital, which is equal to the current networking capital minus the previous networking capital. And we will calculate that over through to the end of our projection period. So now that we've projected out our change in networking capital, we can actually go back to the free cash flow sheet and finally fill in this line plus or minus the change in networking capital. So when we do this, we need to keep in mind that a positive change in networking capital means the networking capital increases. And when networking capital increases, that means that you put money into networking capital, which means that your cash that you're getting in that year actually decreases. So we want to put a negative in front of this number when we do the reference, because if networking capital increases, then that means that you're getting less money coming into your company. So we have to account for that by subtracting the change in networking capital. So we're referencing the current year for the first reference. So we can go ahead and put that in and then we can copy and paste that over for all of the rest of the years. And then now we have projected out our change in networking capital over the course of our projection period. So that concludes all the steps in this video. In this video, we have projected out the change in networking capital in each of the future years. In the next video, we're going to calculate the weighted average cost of capital for our company. That way we can create a discount rate that we will use to discount our cash flows going forward. Thank you again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.